Good morning, change makers. Good morning. You are all welcome to today's learning session titled Design Taking and Innovation. So starting to today's session, I'll be sharing some ground rules. Um, kindly make sure you're muted at all times. Rename your profile to your name and the country where you're from. We will be taking quick the Q&A session after our facilitator has had a session. So taking today's session is Dr. Miriam Siddiq. Dr. Miriam Siddiq is a curious health tech innovation enthusiast. Her curiosity and passion for exploring and learning have led her throughout the past seven plus years in an exciting career journey where she has the chance to experience daily how our actions can drive an impact and improve lives. Miriam is a pharmacist by degree with pharmacy practice experience and expertise in business innovation, de developing smart goals, efficient execution of operational activities, and team management. She applies design thinking for the co-creation of solutions along the user journey with the ambition to unlock possibilities to deliver value for the people and drive better access to innovation to transform the healthcare ecosystem research project. Please do make welcome Dr. Miriam. Um, kindly drop uh, your welcome. Please let's welcome her. She Yes, she has honored us with her presence today and she'll be impacting each and every one of us. Um, Dr. Miriam, if you're here. Thank you. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. And I can see lots of comments going on. And thank you for making time for this. I know it's a weekend and it's really tough to manage, but uh, I'm really blown away with the audience, which is 166 people here. So thank you very much. Thank you, all of you. That means a lot that you are investing your time on the right place and you are investing your time uh, where you can you know, make an impact and learning especially. So thank you very much for the invite. Um, I'll try to share my screen and then we can take it from there uh, in a session. And yeah. Uh, meanwhile, if there is any comment, anything, I'll be you know, having a look. I think she left the call by mistake on network. So please sit tight and keep your welcome coming in the comment section. She will join us shortly, so please be patient. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Dr. Miriam is back. She's yeah. back, okay. And I am just sharing my screen. Here we go. Okay. Um, 
just give me a moment. All right, I'm sure you can all see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Cool. All right, so today's topic, as you mentioned, is design thinking and innovation, which is, um, which like when we hear this word, it seems really, um, you know, fancy and it's like, oh, this is something very difficult. But um, honestly, this is a very simple technique that you can learn. It's um, it's a technique which you can even apply in your daily life examples. And whenever you're, you know, trying to solve problems or you're trying to think to solve any problem. And this is sort of a roadmap which will guide you that, OK, these are the steps which should be taken whenever you're trying to, you know, think to um, make any solution for anything, either it's a bigger, you know, social problem or either it's something like, you know, a really small uh, problem within your organization, maybe within your team. So this is really, you know, simple sort of a strategy or format that you can apply. While innovation um, is something that is, I'd say it's very broad term and there are many, many different techniques and tools which you can use and design thinking is one of that tool. So there are many other as well. And there are also, um, you know, uh, different combinations of uh, techniques that, can, that you can also use in innovation. But I wanted to, uh, you know, clarify on this stage, which is like, we were just starting off that innovation doesn't mean invention always, you know, you don't have to, you know, invent anything and or, you know, bring anything new every time. And that is, you know, to be um, addressed as, oh, this is an innovation. Innovation is simply, you know, really improving things uh, from their existing state and it's really, you know, it's all about doing things better or it's all about, you know, improving things. And it's about, you know, how you can do things uh, in a better way or in a different way, which is, you know, which which benefits, you know, um, your your user, yourself, which is uh, maybe, you know, just saving time. So it's it's all innovation. It really is. You know, we we just uh, in today's world, we just refer, you know, inventions or very new thing as innovation, which is not correct. Innovation is going into our daily lives. We do, you know, uh, things on daily basis that is actually, you know, part of innovation. We're doing things to, you know, make things better or maybe improve ourselves. So that is all, you know, relevant and connected to innovation. Now, today's content will be, um, I'll just um, uh, cover the top three, which is, uh, you know, which is the main uh, topic of today's um, session, which is what are the five steps of design thinking? There are different schools of, uh, you know, thought process for design thinking, what is like why it is important, what tools, and they're really simple tools that you can use for design thinking, if not, uh, you know, in these, um, all of these five steps. And then um, I'll be skipping introduction to system thinking and it will just be, you know, a very short um, brief uh, because it's it's also related to design thinking. So what is actually design thinking? It's actually a problem solving approach that aims to improve the lived experiences of people. So you can imagine that each one of us have different experiences while using any you know same product or while living the same lives we say that okay we, we wake up in the morning we go to work we go to study then we you know we eat we, we we sleep okay this is this is a simple you know routine of any human being or any working profession let's say so it's but the experience is different for each one of us and this technique is really about that how you can improve that lived experiences of people in terms of if you're like solving a very specific problem or making a very specific product so if you're interested in solving problems for people then you can practice design thinking very easily and i'm sure because all of you here are um you know interested in social impact and how you can you know improve uh the the, the society or solving different problems so this is really very easy technique that you can follow and you know um approach that you can apply easily. So here is a question for all of you. What is an experience when you go to a very specific, let's say, coffee shop? So is it a coffee maker or is it a person enjoying a cup of coffee or is it um, is it something else that draws you? So I want you all to take a moment and to think about that what what is your favorite coffee place or let's say um any any food place maybe and what is actually that's uh, drawing you there let's say for me it's at starbucks but let's say why starbucks the, like more or less all the coffees are same and the places nearby is like it's, it's the same it's coffee right but it's the experience for me it's like it's very uh, personalized they write your name they call your name and the ambience is really good i really like um the working stations there so it can be anything and uh let's say 
for me, um, it's like a memory when, when, when I moved or traveled abroad, my first coffee experience was at a Starbucks and it's really nice. And whenever I go there, I really, um, you know, pay a visit to that specific branch because that's, that's where my memory, you know, came in. So there are different, uh, you know, there are different reasons when we use a selected product or let's say a specific product, or we prefer a product. So I'd like all of you to think about, uh, you know, this sort of experience. If it's a coffee shop experience, um, it's it's very welcome if you can share if not there must be a food place or there must be a product that you're really drawn to and I want you all to think that was it what 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 is it what's the reason you're inclined to that product or that experience is it that um, product itself or is it um, a service or is it the experience so if if there are any examples you're welcome to um, you know share in the chat box or maybe you can unmute or you know Okay, so somebody's saying coffee bars are relaxing and a good place to work at. They're usually sitting. Okay, that's a reason. So that's an experience you look for whenever you go to a coffee place. What else? Is there any um, other examples or any other experience people want to share? You can also unmute yourself and just speak up. Yeah, go ahead. Somebody raise their hand. Okay, both product and service. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mary. Morning, thank you. Hey, hello. We can hear you uh, loud and clear. Go ahead. Okay, so experience to me, it is a copy maker. Okay. I mean, uh, experience is anything that a person can contribute mm -hmm. to to community or to his people to be helpful and encourage them. And anything that has to do with the skills that you have, either uh, either skill or unskilled experience. It's all is an experience once it is uh, good. Have you understood? Okay, thank Hello? you. Yeah, yeah, you. I got your answer. Thank you. Okay. Um. So yes, uh, in terms, it's true that um. Okay, it's 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 the people, it's the skill set. So all in all, it's what we are actually focusing here is about experience. It's not just the machine. Let's say I have a coffee maker at home as well, but you know, it's it's different when we go to a coffee shop, right? Maybe it's the same coffee maker or maybe not, but still it's the experience that what we really look for. So um, I'd say uh, there are other different. Um... Would you like to take more um, contributions? We have some hands raised. I, I, I can take one more and meanwhile, I'll, I'll just like, yeah, I wanted to go through the comments as well. So just one more and then we'll move through. Okay. All right. So Idris Abdul Wahab, you can go ahead. Oh, hello, Mariam. Hey. Yeah, so for me, um, I would say the the experience for me is more like it being an outdoor space because you're able to, you know, feel the environment, nature. And so that sort of like outdoor experience for me is what really draws me to the place. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, the vibe, the ambience, like you mentioned, yeah. yeah, is what really makes me want to yeah um go for that place. Yeah, right? go for that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. So yeah, that's that's what I that that is actually what we're exactly talking about, you know, lived experiences of people. And there are other comments as well that some of you usually go because of good experience. And if you don't feel welcome, you will return. So see, some some of the time is to, if you go to a place which is really fancy, the ambience is really good, the coffee is really good, but you don't feel welcome. Or let's say the people who are serving are rude, no matter how good the ambience is, or it's very, you know, it's a very good place, very nicely decorated and everything, but you don't want to sit there because you don't feel welcome. So you come back and that very feeling is your experience, right? So that is all what we are talking about here, that design thinking is really all about how you can improve that experience. It And again, it can be any product, it can be any service, it can also be, you know, any, um, any social service as well. So it's all about how you are making people feel right and 
yeah, experience is the person enjoying the coffee. For some, sometimes it's like your company. Sometimes it's like uh, the service which I connect to the best. The product comes in second, right? It's the service and the product that matters to me. Okay. Many big food restaurants, yeah, provide Wi-Fi because they want their customers to feel connected, to feel welcomed. And then the food is, you know, uh, an additional thing. So yeah, a lot of you are saying the same things that it's mostly about the, 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 the experience and experiences make up of, you know, people around you, the ambience around you, the scenery, maybe the, the Wi-Fi, let's say. So it's all about, you know, how you're experiencing that ex specific service or a product. Okay, so design thinking actually requires you to consider a person's experience in order to focus on their human needs. So it's actually about when you think about your experience, so you can focus what you actually need. And once you're solving that need, then you can always add on to that experience. So let's say I want to get a head drink hot drink right so and that is my my specific need or i want to go out of the home or get a hot drink because i can't make it at home so i'm going to a coffee shop but when you enter to that coffee shop it's not just that coffee it's also the wi-fi that you're getting it's also the ambience that you're getting it's also let's say um there, there's a workstation where you can work so it's also that that okay you can it's a serene place it's it's a place where you can go and focus and then there are people who you can meet there as well and if there's a meeting you can always call people there as well so that is all which is you know connecting to each other making the experience itself so it's not just coffee that you're going for that's the basic need and then you are just you know, um, embellishing that experience overall. So design thinking is actually the, that, you know, technique which focuses you uh, to, you know, to, to focus on the human need first, and then you can improve the experience itself. Okay, so here's another, another example. I want you all to imagine a ways uh, where we can, you know, put flowers into. Now, if you, like anyone, if you have pencil and paper with you, um, you can draw a vase and just, you know, um, click a picture and drop it in the chat box, like three or four of you. Just draw a simple vase. Where, when I say that it's a vase where we keep flowers, how would you draw it? Just draw it and drop a picture in the in the chat box and I'll see. Anyway, if you, you can just draw a vase and on paper and then just drop that picture in the chat box. No, you can draw an empty vase as well. So whatever comes to your mind when I say this word, maybe with flowers, maybe without flowers. Or maybe you can just draw and show it in the camera. Just one or two of you, if you can. Okay, I got Pratija um, sticker. It's really nice ways, or I'd say plant pot. But yeah, it's nice. Who else? Okay, nice. I can see the picture. Yeah, it's a vase. Okay. Pretty much same, not just, just the flowers missing, I'd say. But yeah, who else? Hmm. Okay, oh. so here is how to send. Um, so you take a picture, you draw it on a piece of, piece of paper, take a picture, then go to the comments where you type your comments and click the plus sign on the left hand side. Very good. I can see some sending their pictures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some different drawings are also coming in. Some of them have flowers, some have don't. There's, there's a brown pot as well. So there's a variety in stickers as well. I can see. Oh, there are leaves, just leaves <laughs> without ways. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is interesting. Okay. Okay. I can see a Google picture as well. That's a pretty vase. Okay. Um, now um, you have to like listen to me once you you're done with the vase. I guess we are, we are almost done. There are many pictures I can see here with flowers, without flowers, different shapes. Okay, you're scared to share a picture. <laughs> 
it's okay it's nice i can see um a lot of pots and flower pots and vases actually okay there's a rose okay oh that's all right all right enough with the ways um now moving on to the next part of the session um i'd all like you to listen to the sentence that i'll say and i'll drop it in the chat as well and then you're going to draw that whatever the sentence or comment i'm going to drop here so now you have to draw a system where anyone can enjoy the fragrance now i'm calling this as a system so you can draw anything whichever comes to your mind so you have to draw a system on a paper from which you can you know enjoy fragrances maybe in your room in your house wherever you are so now you have to draw that so first you have drawn the vase now you have to draw a system where you can you know enjoy fragrance so it's very different take out another piece of paper and then you draw it and then you drop the picture here again whatever comes to your mind and i can still see a lot of drawings going on Dr. Miriam, so when you say draw a system, do you mean draw a product? Because some people might draw their laptops on the paper. How could you like enjoy fragrance? Does your laptop have that function that you can sniff out actually the fragrance? <laughs> if so, then it's a new laptop. <laughs> so by system, I mean it can be anything, you know, it can be a product, it can be a spray, it can be anything that comes to your mind. So system is actually, you know, anything that you can enjoy you know, fragrance through. So it can be, you know, really a, just a vase. It can be anything. So you'll have to think through. And there, I guess, pictures downloading. Okay, this is sort of a box or something I see. Okay, there are flowers outside. Oh, there's a spray. Interesting. Was again, there is food, <laughs> there is cake. <laughs> Somebody's birthday. There's a spray bottle. Okay. Okay, lots of stickers. I can see honey. I've drawn, but don't know how to sound. Okay, it's fine. You can just oh, there's a lot of food coming in. Do you guys really put food to like smell? <laughs> Don't eat. <laughs> it's specifically about fragrance. So do you guys like really use your food? <laughs> I'm sure not. It can be a just a like just food. It it could be a perfume. Maybe it could be like yeah, scented candles. It can be yeah, again a flower pot. Okay, scented candles. Yeah, a perfume spray sort of thing, just flowers. I don't know what that is, I guess, scandal. A car. Okay, spray bottles. Again, a window. Okay. Okay, lots of, lots of different ideas I just see. Um, so you see uh, here, what I did was I just changed the arrangement of words or I changed the sentence, what I was saying, and then the different ideas coming in. Technically, a was is, you know, is the same. It is used to put flowers in for the purpose of fragrance in the house or your surrounding, right? But when I just changed the, the words 
and I was trying to say the same thing, there are lots of different ideas which came in and you can see it's, it can be, you know, scented uh, candles, it can be sprays, it can be, you know, um, a nice pot or anything else that you can use. So it really changed your perspective and it changed my words. When I said was, your mind was limited to just draw that specific um, object, which you can, you know, really enjoy fragrance from and it's just flower that you're putting in but when I change the words it's really change your mind and then then you thought about okay there are many different ways which you can actually you know improve that experience of feeling that fragrance so you don't you have drawn like different many different other things and you've drawn even food so you see how the experience is been changed when you think about that experience itself and not not just you know limit your mind when um you know whenever solving or trying to solve a problem you know you really need to think that what is that human need and what is that experience that you're going to improve and it really applies to any of the you know product or service that you're designing so it really is the experience and it really is about that what exact need are you you know um solving or catering to and then it makes the perfect product or let's say a service uh, or let's say the, the best possible um, outcome because it really opens your mind and you're thinking about that overall experience. It's not just that, okay, I want to put my flowers in somewhere. It's a vest and there you go. And then the all of the other ideas are, you know, immediately shut down or you don't even think of those ideas. So here I just changed the words and you saw the result yourself that how it changed your mind and how it changed your mindset and you were all thinking about more you know about that fragrance that how you can really enjoy that fragrance and there are like different many ways that you depict it okay so that is how we actually you know think about you know design thinking and think about any problem we're like solving for and this is really an approach you know where you think about people's experience okay now design thinking is actually, uh, you know, it deals with problem space and then you go towards the solution space. So obviously it's a problem solving approach. So you start off with problem. So the first step where you really start is you empathize. You try to feel what your user is feeling or you try to be in the issues and then you reframe. You, you frame what the problem is and then you ideate upon it. You go towards the solution phase that, okay, these are the possible ideas or these are the possible solutions. And then you go prototype and test with a smaller user segment. And then you go through, you know, um, again, that iteration process. If there's something missing, if there's there's a feature that you want to add, if there's a feedback from user that you want to change. So that is how it really goes. There's a problem space and then there's a solution space. So you go from you can see the tangled space to linear space that okay uh, you're ending up with a single solution or let's say a single um, proposal that this is how we can really you know improve this or that you know any specific problem so there are different school of thoughts when we talk about design thinking uh, and there are different steps what i follow is a stanford d school and it's a uh, because I, I i'm coming from healthcare background so it's mostly those five steps that we follow but it's not necessary that it's a it's not a linear process it's not that you have to do this one two three four five way it's it's very you know open ended you come back again you iterate you go back to the solution you come back so it's 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 sort of a cycle you go into right so it's not really that you follow a very specific school it's just the core that you need to remember that in each school of thought we always start with empathizing and then we go towards defining our problem then we ideate on that problem that what could exactly we do to solve that and then we prototype and test and same goes with other uh, school of thoughts as well let's say you start off with gathering you know according to idea you start off with gathering insights then you generate some insights from it and then you make something and then you share it with your users so it's pretty much the same the meanings are same but you can follow through any school of thought and the steps and then you can you know move forward now here, uh, we are, we'll discuss these five steps, empathize, define, idea, prototype, and test, because this is really easy to you know, understand, and it's really easier to grasp the understanding. Now, in the step of empathizing, you start with different tools. Sometimes you start with a challenge in your mind that's already there. Sometimes you start with context mapping. So you can see there are different tools in each step which we can use. We usually start with empathy mapping. We start with 
feeling that what your user thinks, feels, do, rather than saying, because most of the time what your user is saying is not actually the case. What they're feeling is different what, from what they're saying. So you need to you know, observe, you need to empathize. Maybe sometimes uh, you have to live through that experience. Let's say, what, what is the journey of being you know, uh, waiting in an emergency room? So all of us, I, I know at some point in life have gone through you know, that experience. We, we, we want to, you know, um, take ourselves or somebody in our family to the emergency and that waiting experience each one of us have different experience right because it's 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 different for each one of us we 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 don't know what kind of uh, you know um, emergency what was it what kind of hospital so it's a different experience for all of us but the waiting we all know the waiting is really known when you're going into emergency it's really known so that waiting experience is where you start to empathize if you're designing for example any solution for that so you'll start off with you know empathizing even if there is no emergency and you want to improve that you know uh, experience and you're working on that so you go through that experience trying to you know empathize with your user that okay i i want to improve this waiting experience let me experience it myself and see where i can you know improve things and see how it feels with what really is my pain and what um, actually I should, you know, work on. Sometimes it looks like, okay, waiting experience is really, you know, let's say um, a pain point for, 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 for people, for example, in this case. So I'll say that, okay, maybe it's the, it's the doctor that we need to change. Maybe it's the service. Maybe we can, um, you know, change any other thing. And it's not wait, just waiting experience. It's something else that we need to solve. So when you go through that experience, when you empathize with the user or even, you know, try to put your uh, feet into their shoes, you really empathize and you really know what the need is. And here is where most of the time uh, any, you know, any problem solver will invest because, if you identify the right need or right problem, only then you will you know, go towards solving the right solution. So you start off with empathizing, you define what problem you want to solve. Here, as I gave the example that, okay, I want to improve the you know, waiting experience in, in emergency department of any hospital. Then I idea that, okay, how I can solve this or how I can improve that you know, waiting experience but, because you cannot eliminate, right? You cannot eliminate that waiting time or you can say that, okay, there's no waiting area, people will come and go to hospitals you know really quick five ten minutes no it can't happen okay waiting will be there now how can you improve that experience so you will define that okay i'm going to um let's say i'm going to improve waiting experience by decreasing the waiting time let's say 20 minutes so earlier it was let's say 40 minutes now it will be maybe 30 minutes so 10 minutes decrease in waiting time. That is how you solve or idea about, you know, problems. And then you prototype well, whatever solution you're introducing. You you test it for some days with, within a different small hospital setup. And then you go about it that once you have that user feedback that, okay, it's working. And sometimes, you know, they need some other things. Or you realize after implementing, you know, the prototype, it's a small version of the solution that you're, you know, trying to um, propose. It's like um, you test it and then there's there's feedback, you know, that, okay, you can improve this, you can improve that, or maybe you can, you know, just uh, remove any specific thing that you're doing into your solution. And you test it, you test it again and again. So it's really an iterative process. It's not just a step one, two, three, four, five, and there you are done or you solved that problem. It is really an iterative process in all of the design thinking firms in the world or, uh, or all of the uh, you know, firms who are applying this approach. They really, they really you know, iterate on their products, even Apple. You know? So they come up with, with the iterative process. They, they keep improving that product or service because they want to, you know, they want to keep the feedback in mind and they they apply that feedback and because it's all about people right you you're giving that product or service to people or users so it's really all about them whatever they want so what what they're wanting they they improve it and then they relaunch it and you you see that every time uh, there are not much you know differences in iphone let's say iphone 14 then then it's pro and then it's max they're very minor differences but there is difference and people are buying it because there's something for 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 each user in there and there is something that they're catering for the users so they really you know they are really solving that need that the user have and then they are solving it iterating it and then going back again so there are other tools as well uh, let's say in defining 
stage you can you can use empathy mapping you can use journey mapping you can also use how might we statements that for example how might we improve x experience for x users to uh, to increase degrees or to solve any specific problems so that is called how might we statements uh, we we can also use brainstorming think different there are very uh, many you know different techniques and then obviously for prototyping you can if if there is an app that you're designing you can use a wireframe you can use a beta version of your um, app or you can simply you know draw it on paper run it through different users let's say 10 15 users and ask about the feedback and then you test it you know you design that uh, app or website and then you launch it so that that's how you go and these are like really different tools each tool is really uh, you know it's, it's it takes time it's it's in depth tool and there's a team who done it not what it's not a one man person or one person you know um thing to do but it's an approach that you really need to understand here that okay empathize is the stage where you start then you define your problem then you idea it then you prototype and test so empathize and define are the problem space uh, steps and then idea prototype test are the uh, solution space so that's that's what you really need to remember and then you can really you know take it from there now as as i mentioned that i follow uh, stanford d school um you know uh, thought of thought process so there are actually five stages that uh, you follow through you know this approach that is empathize define idea prototype test and assess is again it's the same you know it's the part of test a step. So there really are like five steps. So starting from empathize, how do we actually do it? So in simple words, we conduct interviews with the users, we uncover emotions, we seek a story. So what we do is we actually observe that how the user is living that experience and how user is going through it. And it takes sometimes days, sometimes months, if you're, you know, observing communities or a smaller population, let's say. So it takes a lot of time. And then you ask questions, uh, to them when you design those interviews to really when you're you know trying to solve that any specific problem then you come back and you define you reframe and define that human centric problem statements that okay this is a problem they're facing and then you identify meaningful surprises maybe there's anything that's that's going unnoticed or nobody's you know paying attention to that but that really is a problem which can be solved right and you take out insights from those interviews and there is where you define two or three problem statements and once you're done with it you sit with the team you ideate you brainstorm radical ideas you build on each other ideas that okay this can lead to this this solution or let's say this can uh, this can be solved in a particular way maybe a service, maybe a product, maybe just, um, you know, maybe just introducing a technological, you know, solution. So it could be anything, right? It could be, it could be any solution. So you ideate on those ideas and then you prototype, you create low resolution objects or experiences. Let's say you, you do it on a smaller scale, right? You role play to understand the context and key features and you quickly build to think and learn because this is not the final stage. This is not your final product. You need to prototype it. You need to test it unless, you know, with your user segment, but, and if you don't do it, you won't really know. No, no product is perfect in one go. No product is, you know, uh, good to go and, you know, hit the market in the first place. So you have to go through this prototype stage and then you assess it that how it is working. You value it that is it working fine? Are there any troubles? Then you come back through the first step. You again go towards empathizing, you know, your users that maybe you're missing out something. And if not to empathize, you certainly come back to the ideation stage that, okay, we can, now we have the user's feedback, we can ideate better. So let's build on better ideas. So you build on those ideas again, you, pro, you make your prototype better, and then you test again. And by redoing it again and again, and that is, actually what is iteration and that that's what really companies are doing they iterate again and again no product is perfect and then you you do you're doing this cycle and again and again you're covering those insights and yeah that, that's how you are you know following this process through it's it's mentioned here as well it's not necessarily linear you apply steps as needed sometimes it's like um we spend time on let's say more time on prototyping than just defining the problem because you're solving the right problem you know it but it's the prototyping stage sometimes it's ideation sometimes it's you know defining so it really depends but empathizing is 
really the step where everybody, uh, every design thinker or every expert, you know, enforces your time should be because it's really the first step. Unless you know the right problem, you can't solve it the right way. So yeah, empathize, define idea, prototype, test are the five steps which you go through. Now we'll deep dive into, you know, each step that how we can actually do it. So empathy is actually the foundation of, you know, human-centered design. When you think about human, it's really how they feel. It's empathizing with them. And by empathy, I don't mean sympathy. There is a difference between sympathy and empathy, right? Sympathy is actually, you know, feeling bad that, oh, they're going through poverty and not do anything, right? And sympathy is just, you know, um, sympathy is also feeling, but it's not, it's not in a way that you're trying to solve it. Empathy is really that, you know, feeling that experience and then doing something about it. So if you're not doing something about it, it's sympathy. But if you're doing something about it, it's empathy. So that's the difference between empathy and sympathy. And we really need you to remember it because um, people do confuse sympathy with empathy that, okay, we, we know how they feel. You know, if, if somebody loses someone, they, they say that, oh, we know how it feels. We know how it feels to be poor. We know how it feels to be deprived of resources. We know how it feels to be discriminated, you know? Okay, knowing is one thing, but what you are doing about it, what is the action that you're taking? And if you're taking any action, that is when it turns into empathy that you really want to improve that experience of that person or those people, you actually want to do something and you're helping towards it, you know? Sometimes sympathy is not enough, not just, you know, not just realizing, not just saying some words, doesn't help solve that problem, right? Empathy is leading to that. So you are just, you know, guiding that, um, that those feelings to develop a solution or let's say to improve situation of, of that experience or of those people right so that's the difference that you need to remember and how you do it you obviously you observe your users their behaviors you engage with them as i mentioned you interview them you ask questions you interact with them maybe it can be scheduled it can be short encounters and you immerse into the, the those experiences and then you find out that what exactly is what they need and here is a video that i'm going to play i hope it plays I got the job job on total jobs okay uh can you hear uh the sound as well yes we can okay perfect so he, this is this is a very nice video about how it is different, you know, the empathy and sympathy part, and how the experiences really lead you to, you know, solving any uh, problem. So I'll need you to see through this like very carefully. It's a very nice video.
okay, so right, you would be definitely more empathetic and treat them better. Okay. Deep message, yes. Okay, and how are you feeling now? Okay, so when now you, you know, now you can see that there's a lot of things going on with people around you and you judge them or you speak them, oh, that doctor is not, you know, paying attention to me. Oh, that nurse is not listening to me and I'm frustrated. And this is just a hospital experience, right? There are many, many experiences that we live uh, through in our daily lives and we don't know that what what is going through with that person you know actually and how we can you know help them better or maybe empathize with them better and it's not just about us it's about the people as well and that is how an experience is built it's all about how you you know think about that human and design thinking actually is a human-centered tool so you really need to think every time or all the time about that human, that how they would feel if you introduce this solution or service, right? So you feel empathy, right? By watching this video, you understand that how it is different, you know, what, what you, when, whenever you're trying to build a solution, you really think about, you know, how they would feel or how the, the people will feel, right? So yes, that's really, um, you know, a heart touching uh, video. And I hope that you will really understand now the difference between, you know, the difference between empathy and sympathy itself. So yeah, moving on. Um, this is another tool that we use that is called what, how, and why. Um, and this is picture. So whenever you're trying to solve a problem and you start with empathizing, you see that uh, what, what, what are people doing and how they're doing it and why they're doing it in this specific way. And this is a very um, basic example. You, could, you can just use the tool in whatever solution you're trying to build. So you start off with whatever your user is doing, how they're doing it and why they're doing it in a specific way and how you can make it better when you're designing any solution, right? So this is like just a tool. Once you're done with the empathizing step, talking with your users, interviewing them, observing them, whatever tool you're using, you unpack that and you synthesize your empathize findings into needs and insights and a scope, a specific or meaningful challenge, or let's say problem statement that, okay, my users are going through this, this and that experience. As I already mentioned the example of, let's say my like patients are going through waiting waiting experience or patient are ex patients are experiencing increased waiting time in hospital emergency department and i want to solve it so that is how you define you know that um that problem statement which you want to solve and you scope it from your you know experiences you can't solve all the problems in one solution right so you need to be very specific you need to be very focused uh from your observations that that is one challenge that you're you know, trying to solve, or let's say one problem statement to define, to move through this you know, process. Dr. Miriam, we have five more minutes. Thank okay. you. Okay, so this is another example how we can improve the grocery shopping, this and that. Then again, we ideate, we ideate in the, as I mentioned, we ideate into different models. We go wide and then we select different ideas that what will work. And then again, we prototype and test. So prototype is actually getting ideas and explorations out of your head and, you know, testing it into physical world that is it working, is it not working, as I mentioned. Why prototype? Prototype is actually important to test the functionality for many reasons, for empathy gaining, for exploration, to know that how good your solution is working. Is it really working what you were really thinking about? And then again, you test. So... This is really important sentence and I'd like to end here that prototype as if you know you're right, but test as if you know you're wrong. So you prototype in within mind that, okay, everything is right that has designed, but when you design it, you test it with your users, right? And when you test it, you think that, okay, it's everything wrong. So you're very ready for the improvements. You're very ready for the feedback and you then apply that feedback and you go in the market with the full-fledged product, right? And that is how it's like really important, you know, to test when once you done with the prototyping so yeah th that's all about like design thinking i know that's very brief and short but due to time i couldn't you know explain it more in a more better way it's a very very um uh, in-depth technique there are many tools a lot of time has been invested when you are falling through but all you need to remember is really these five steps you empathize you define you idea test you know 
so that's that's really the flow and if there are any questions i would uh, you know happily take them thank you so much dr miriam please can we give her a round of applause in the comment section this has been a very impactful and uh, practical session you took us through the empathy um, relating with our customers or people we are trying to impact and then building a prototype, the testing phase. I mean, it's really amazing. It's so explanatory. Thank you so, so much. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, this is the perfect time to raise up your hands and I would ask you to unmute your mic. So questions, you can relate this to your project. Uh, your impact projects you're working on. This is very, very, this is a platform where you can relate everything you're learning to what you're doing. Okay, so we have Abdulaziz Babatunde. So you can unmute your mic. Good morning, sir. Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, good morning, sir. Um, I really appreciate it goes to Dr. Miriam for a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, my, the question I just want to ask, based on the last heading you explained, in that prototype and types, now what are, can you please give me a clear more examples? And you know at times when we, you want to do something and you, know, you, can, you yourself, you do not know whether the thing is wrong or right, how sure that you be know that whether the thing will be prototype or types? And another thing, please, can you help us forward the presentation so that we can still go through it even after the today missing? Thanks. Yes. So there is not actually a very, you know, difference between prototyping and testing. It's prototype is actually, let's say you design a solution for your problem. Let's say you want to design an app for let's say awareness, okay? But that is, you know, designing an app is not easy. So what you'll do is you will draw a wireframe for that first. A wireframe is very basic, you know, drawing, let's say on paper, where you will, you know, draw screens that, okay, this will the first screen, this will how the platform look like, this is how the functions would be, these are the options. Let's say you draw three or five screens on paper and then you go to your users, a very small group, and you ask them that, okay, this is the solution we are trying to, you know, introduce for the problem that you explained. So how will it work? And you ask them questions. So that is how you prototype. And this is where, this is a very basic, you know, example. It can be anything, it can be, um let's say it can be let's say you want to again go, going back to coffee you know experience let's say you want to open a coffee shop for example but um uh, you know there are a lot of shops and you can't go out there and open a big shop you start off with let's say a group of people you try a new recipe of coffee which you want to you know introduce in your cafe that's your prototype you test it with a small number of people a small group and that's your prototype and you're testing with side, you know, side by side with that. So prototype is that a small solution that you're trying to, you know, um, introduce and testing is actually doing it, you know, uh, having uh, that product test in the market that how will user feel about it? So they will get, give feedback and then you'll improve it. So that's related prototype and test stages, how it's related, right? So I hope that clears your question. If there's another question, I guess we have one or two more minutes. Yes, um, Yusuf. Can you um, unmute your mic? Good morning, Good morning, Dr. Miriam. Thank you for the class. Uh, I got to learn one or two things about design thinking. So I have a simple question. I want to understand, you know, most of our solution has to do with collaboration. So I want to understand in the design thinking flow, where, where can we include collaboration to properly solve certain problems thank you all right thank you for the question and again if you have seen the video you will definitely see that where collaboration will fit you know it's all about people human it's human-centered design thinking itself is a human-centered approach right so collaboration is always there on each step i'd say and 
actually on first step because if you're collaborating with people you're talking to people you're trying to solve their problems so that is what empathy actually is you're trying to you know understand what people are going through so collaborating is all about you know working with people knowing people so i guess empathy is the first step where we will go about you know collaboration and again it's not a linear sort of uh, methodology as i mentioned you can apply it you know in any or every step let's say when you're prototyping or obviously you're dealing with people when you're testing your product you're also dealing with people you're collaborating right it's not a one man show so when you're collaborating with people obviously you're designing it for people for their experiences to improve their experiences so collaboration is there on every step be it with your team members be it with your users be it with both of them so there are people involved in all of the process and where people comes in there comes in collaboration so i guess collaboration is not very different it's about people you're trying to solve their problems you're trying to solve problems for social impact so that is how you're you know just applying that okay amazing so we have Mustafa, Tassiu Mustafa, do you have a question? Your hand is up. So hold on, I'm going to ask you to unmute. You can unmute your mic now. Hello, Ma. Yeah. Good morning yeah. for your good presentation on the today's program. I'm so good morning to Dr. Miriam for her good lecture deliberation of this today's program. I am really appreciate your effort. I'm also really appreciate for why because I'm really understood very well and I know how to conduct design thinking. I know what is prototype. I know what is important of test, what is reason of test, what will you identify, identify and open after conducting a test. I'm really appreciate your effort. I'm also really appreciate your effort because I'm well understand. May Allah bless you and also in general. Yeah, like okay. okay. Yes, that is more of a feedback. All right. So thank you so much, Mustafa. It shows you're listening. Thank you so much for being a part of this class. So we'd have um Zimu Zochuku Nanji. So I'm going to ask you to unmute and yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning here from Enugu. Um, thank you, Mrs. Miriam, for the insightful teaching. I want to know, in the project we are to design, are we to use prototype in an individual project or in the group project? If we are designing a group project, are we to prototype it? And uh, same with the individual projects. Thank you. So the project you are working on, I'm not sure Dr. Miriam knows about the project you're yeah. working on, but I, I, uh, but I would like her to still give her input if she has any. Okay, um, so it's up to you. But again, it's just a methodology, so it's not really about that. You know, you apply it uh, in both of the projects. Maybe you can apply it with your group, uh, and you see that how it works. And it's really about. Uh, about the solution that you're designing if it's if it's like just you know questioning people and if it's not a really sort of product that will take time so obviously you can just prototype for for one project let's say if you have a limited time here right but if you have time so sure you can obviously prototype for your individual product as well go for you know group project as well and you'll see that how prototyping is actually working in both of the cases because because i'm sure your individual product project is different from your group project right so you'll see how prototyping is different again so it's again it's up to you uh whatever you want to go for so yeah okay so the next question we're taking is from ibekwe aldo please unmute your mic and ask your question Good day, Miss Miriam. She's Dr. Miriam. <laughs> okay, sorry, Dr. Miriam. I'm so sorry. It's okay, it's okay. So, Go ahead with your question. Okay, please, please, ma'am. My question here is on empathy. Now, mm -hmm. we have uh, a talk on design thinking requires you to consider a person's experience in order to focus on their human needs. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm asking, what if you try to use the method of engaging in order to have a, a collaboration and the person is not responding? You know, sometimes people try to mute themselves. They try to hold on to whatever that is their, uh, 
because of their depression also. So how are we going to be able to have our, our design in, in some approaches or in something that we want to get tested or so? That's my question. Thank you. Mm, that's a very, very tricky question. Um, and you're right about that because um, every, uh, you know, human is different from each other and the interaction is different with them. Not everybody will cooperate with you or not everybody is easy to talk with. So um, in terms of, you know, communication or let's say collaboration, it's there are different methods actually. Uh, and communication methods are, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's really a different sort of domain or expertise uh, where you can, you know, engage people or collaborate with people. Sometimes it's interviews, sometimes it's ideation sessions, sometimes it's one-way seminars or let's say uh, one-way kind of monologue. Sometimes it's video, sometimes it's social media, sometimes it's, you know, um, some sort of competition where you provide incentive and you get people, you know, engaged in or interested in because that's how some you know group of people works that's how you can really engage them so it's different with different i'd say um group of people you're interacting with with the user segment that you're interacting with let's say if they're kids there there are different activities you could do right if, if you're designing a solution for kids for example if they're adults or if they're like women so that, that there's you know different strategy or different tools that you will be using to engage or collaborate with them or to communicate with them so it really depends what kind of like solution you're working on what kind of user segment you're dealing with so i'd say it's really about um different techniques that you can um you know really apply so that's that i guess uh we are like over time, uh, I'm not sure if you can like take more questions, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my LinkedIn in the chat box. And if there are any questions, you can always direct back there. You can also like email if you want to the team and they can pass on your queries. But yeah, thank you so much for, um, you know, for your time. We actually still have a little bit more time. Okay. Except if, yes, we just a little bit more time. So we'll be taking Oyeka from, Oyeka will be from Nigeria. Kindly um, go ahead with your question. Yeah, good morning. No, this is Oyeka from Lafayette, Nassau State. Okay, my good morning, Dr. Miriam. Um, my question prototyping when you come to design thinking. Okay, mm -hmm. so after I get in, after brainstorming and getting an idea, Do you have to bring new idea or come up with something new that is already in existence that you can you can modify or you can you can use instead of bringing something new? So when you bring a prototype, a new innovation to to actually get a solution, that's my question. I need a bit of clarification on that. Thank you. Did you get that, Doctor? Yeah. I am not sure if I get it completely, but I guess it's it's a confusion. And he's asking that prototype is actually a new in innovation or a new thing uh, to to produce, which is actually not the case. Prototype is one of the steps we follow through in the design thinking methodology. It's the fourth step, or you can say last step. Prototype is actually the solution, you know, prototype is a small scale solution, which you are designing for the problem that you uncovered in the empathy and ideation stage. And you're, when you're solving it, prototype is a small scale solution. You're, um, you know, you're going in with your users with a small um, scale solution. You're going to test it. That is it working or is it not working? What features you need, what you don't need. It's very basic form. Or you can say it's an experiment. It's an it's a small experiment you'll do with your proposed solution. You go with the users, and that is what a prototype is. It's not necessarily you know every time a very new thing or an invention per se. It's a step, and when you are done with your prototype, you go towards testing your final product, or let's say testing your solution on a bigger scale. So that is how it goes. So prototype is not necessarily a really you know new thing uh, if if that helps answering your question uh, i'm not sure if 
if that was yeah i think that makes that makes a lot of sense yeah okay so from aisha mohammed can you please unmute your mic and ask your question we're rounding up for today's session aisha mohammed okay can we have abdullahi rig him Is Abdullah on this call? Please, Young, let, okay, let us have you, please, Young. Uh, uh, Dr. Maria, good day. I really okay. enjoy your lecture. Thank I really you. enjoy your lecture. Thank you so much. Um, I really got an uh, excited uh, idea from you. Because uh, well, my question now is that if a company or an investor gave me assignment or a project, First of all, you need my business plan. I need my uh, prototype. And he's in need of my deck speech. Mm -hmm. Have you get me? Um, Hello? Yeah. Go ahead, Abdullah. Go, go ahead. OK. You need my business plan, prototype, pitch decks, and video. So all through this your lecture or uh, i'm listening i got an idea how to do and arrange this but the only thing i will ask and i um, I, I will need to get more highlight about it is that through the way you present your presentations i really got some uh, some ways to depend myself in my project how do I uh, design my business plan is based on empathic I, I, I see. And uh, how to do my uh, prototype designation is the way you elaborate a, a lot of. So the speech decks, the way you the way you sit and explain to us, I thought it will be like that. Eh? So I need more clarity about my Okay, so Abdullahi, I don't think Dr. Miriam knows the exact projects you're working on. So if you'd like to, uh, we don't have much time since that's not a direct question. Um, would like to bring this session to a close. Thank you so much, Dr. Miriam. On behalf of the entire team, would like to say thank you for honoring our invitation. And on behalf of Mr. Emmanuel, he says, I sincerely appreciate you for your support and presence in all our trainings. So thank you so much, Dr. Miriam. We really appreciate your time. You've impacted us with your knowledge and your expertise. And it's an amazing and informative session. Thank you so much. Thank can you. We have, yes, we can see the comments. Thank you, Dr. Miriam. Yeah. Please <laughs> appreciate half our time. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. And um, again, I have shared my LinkedIn with you in the chat. You can share it with them. If there is any other question, they can just drop in um, on LinkedIn and I'll just, uh, you know, respond. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. There's a lot of uh, comments <laughs> going in. Uh, I just have to run. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the invitation. And I hope uh, the session was helpful. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Okay. So this brings us to the end of today's session on design thinking and innovation. Uh, we do hope you've been able to learn a lot and um, have interactions and be able to relate this with your individual and upcoming projects. Mm -hmm. So if you have any other questions regarding your program, you can drop it on the WhatsApp community group. It will be open for um, you to um, communicate with your team members. And as there is no attendance, for this call. Thank you so much and um, see you next week. Bye.